morning everyone. Hope you're all keeping warm on this uh, beautiful rainy day. Um, can we please turn to First Peter? Um, and we will be going back to chapter 1 in First Peter. This text will be verse 6 and 7. Um, so let's read quickly from verse 1 to 9. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to God's elect, strangers in the worlds scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia and Bithynia, who have been chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit, for obedience to Jesus Christ and sprinkling by His blood. Grace and peace be yours in abundance. Praise be to God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In His great mercy He has given us new birth into a living hope to the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade, kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come to you so that your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory and honour when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen Him, you love Him. And even though you do not see Him now, you believe in Him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy, for you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, for this uh, precious morning and this glorious day. Uh, we thank you for sustaining us uh, up until this point in our lives. We thank you that we can come and worship you on this day. We pray for this little Bible study session. Uh, open our hearts and ears and minds to understand and perceive and uh, we just know, pray and hope that uh, we can know you more intimately uh, as our Father and God. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, you know, as reading this, we can, you know, we keep, you know, we can see how beautiful this text is that uh, we've just read. Um, and if you remember last time, uh, a month ago, uh, we looked at verses three to five, and. Uh, we said that uh, the Lord our God has given us, uh, He's been merciful to us, He's given us a wonderful, glorious hope. Uh, it was in verse 3. Uh, this eternal inheritance uh, in verse 4. Um, we become God's possessions uh, in, in this heavenly realm uh, eternally. So as God is working in us now, um, He, at the consummation of when Christ returns, it's the final day of salvation, and we are finally saved. And uh, we, we are standing there at the judgment seat of, of Christ, justified uh, in Christ, and glorified in heaven with Christ. No more suffering, we said. There's everlasting communion uh, and union with the trying God, our Father, in heaven. And so we concluded by saying, that this life was not our best life now, um, but our best life is yet to come. 
And so we'll continue now in verses 6 and 7 in 1 Peter, uh, 1 Peter chapter 1. Um, and we'll continue there. And Peter tells us now the reasons for our sufferings. Because remember, the church uh, throughout scattered strangers in the world uh, in, in Asia Minor, uh, they were in great suffering and persecutions. Um, and they were destined to suffer, of course, because the Lord said, uh, yeah, He suffered, and so we too, uh, His children, will also suffer. So, verses 6 and 7, uh, I'll just read quickly verse 6 again to us. Uh, In this you greatly rejoice, though for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. And if you look at that verse, what stands out? Uh, Of course we're suffering, but it says we greatly rejoice. Um, We know that in James and Paul and Romans does speak about uh, rejoicing in your trials. And um, this is not a a denial of the reality of our pain. We're not uh, madmen or madwomen who rejoices in our pain. That's not the purpose here. Um, So I think we must expound a bit more what does that mean to rejoice in our sufferings. Um, But there's a joy that we know of, uh, of rejoicing. So that word joy, rejoice, it looks forward, as we said before, to something glorious. Um, A person who has been sentenced, uh, for example, 30 years in in prison for his crimes, Is he not suffering in prison? Of course he is. It's a very bad place to be. uh, You've been dealt with, uh, punished by the civil authorities for your crimes. But but in that, he he must look forward to a day of his release, right? Um, A day where his sufferings are over and perhaps he's been reconditioned in some sense and be free. He has freedom. So then, uh, I'd like to ask you, or ask yourself, if you could ask yourself this question, um, and perhaps answer it just now. Um, Why do you have uh, joy as a Christian? Why? Because everyone will have a different answer, so ask yourself that question. Why do you have joy as a Christian? He gives it to us. Okay, He gives it to us. The Lord gives it to us. It's the joy of the Lord, because of the husband of the Holy Spirit. Yes, the joy of the Lord. <coughs> Imagine in, suffering is extra near. Okay, some Greek. <laughs> Any other answers? Because we have a good, a wonderful hope. Yes, also that, correct. You in His will. Y- yes, you walk in the Lord's will. And that's, that's a wonderful thing. And suffering, the suffering is not purposeless. Yes. Great. We, we're aiming there. We're getting there. <laughs> um, there's lots of reasons uh, for a Christian to have joy in their trials. Um, of course, uh, there's a God's common grace on creation, firstly. Um, uh, you know, God's creation is beautiful. Um, but how much more beautiful is God's special grace to us? Um, but if you think carefully, uh, our joy, uh, I want to make this point, think about it. Our joy is based on something that happened in the past, right? Something that's happening in the present, and as we also said, something that's happening in the future, right? And uh, it's, it's beautiful because... Uh, for the past, we know that the Lord Jesus Christ has come and He's accomplished uh, our redemption on the cross. And we look back and we see how the Lord going into the present has saved us and still saving us. And He's revealing His grace to us continuously. Right? But also in the future, as we said, um, we will take part in this final uh, joy of God's glory um, and the salvation at the consummation where we will be in heaven forever and ever with the Lord in perfect communion and fellowship with Him. And so we spoke before of God's mercy, uh, the mercy of our Lord, by whom we've given this sure hope 
um, which leads us to this rejoicing even in the midst of our sufferings. Um, and so Paul says in Romans chapter 5 verse 3, and I'll read it to you, uh, uh, not verbatim, uh, he says, Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings. Or we could say we exalt or we rejoice or boast in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character, and character hope. And so believers realize that our sufferings are temporary and that our inheritance is eternal. And that's just a wonderful thing to just conceptualize and, and live in uh, with the Lord. It's, it's, it's beautiful. And that gives us uh, this hope and this joy, and the, you know, the joy uh, in our sufferings. Um, I think also it's because we are um, in His purposes and in His will. And Amen. knowing that gives us a comfort. Yes, yeah. it's a very good point. And I'll, I'll expand on that. Uh, the, the law of God, I mean, you do not have pleasure uh, in, in obeying God's law. Um, and so, yes, that's a very good point, that in God's law, when we obey God's law, we feel a sense of, again, a closer communion and union with the Lord. But when we break God's law, um, we feel a sense, a further way, a sense away from the Lord. Um, so, yes, in, in walking in God's will and doing His what he wants us to do, uh, there is a sense of joy and pleasure uh, in that, of course. Um, in addition to that, what we realize and understand why we have joy uh, in the Lord and why we persevere uh, in this, in our sufferings, um, we ask the question, which is now in verse 7. What is the purpose of our sufferings? To perfect us. Yes. In one sense, to perfect us. Correct. Mm -hmm. And so let's just quickly read verse 7. Um, and then we'll go into that a bit deeper. I think uh, we become more obedient. Um, because Jesus also said that. Um, it was written that he became obedient even unto death. Yes. So we have to, it's the again, obedience to his way. So the purpose of our suffering would be for obedience. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay. Any other one? Any other thoughts about the, the, the purposes of our suffering? We did have a study on it and we found about five or six different reasons for the reason for suffering. Yes. You know, it could be punishment for being naughty, like smack. <laughs> yes. Or preventing something else. And, there were a number of different reasons why we yes. suffer. Yes. Good. There's lots of reasons why we suffer. Correct. Discipline because we're sons of God. Mm -hmm. Correct. But there's also a final consummation of our suffering, a grand purpose, um, which I want to try and aim us to. So let's read verse 7. These have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Um, so, so, when we suffer these trials as Christians, um, and remember, these trials are a form of tests uh, in our life, okay? Because it proves, as we've read now, our faith to be genuine uh, in verse 7. So remember, uh, we said that the, the Christians, not all Christians suffer persecution. Um, I mean, we, you know, there's various degrees of persecution, persecution in the world. I mean, you think of... North Korea and China and many other places. Um, the, the early church, of course, was under a fairly mass persecution, and we know the history there in the first century, um, under the Roman government, but also by you know Jews as, as well, especially especially within the church. If you think about 
um, the transition from the old covenant to the new covenant with uh, the, the, the Gentiles coming into the church. Um, there was a lot of turmoil in one sense, but also a, a lot of joy and, and uh, hope in the, in the other sense. Um, but remember Christ, uh, how he suffered, uh, as Monique said, uh, there was a great suffer, on, suffering unto obedience. Um, and so the Lord was persecuted, of course, he was a man of sorrows, um, not purely just because of persecution, the Lord suffered, uh, think about uh, within his own camps, how he suffered, uh, by his own uh, people per se, uh, the Jews in one sense, but also his own disciples, um, their faithlessness. Um, so, when you want to apply this to us, I mean, if you look at Peter, how he denied Christ three times, I'm sure the Lord uh, suffered. He was very sorrowful in that, in that sense. Um, but we too suffer, not purely by external communication, uh, persecutions, but also within our own families. Um, our children, our parents, um, our siblings. Um, we suffer because of death. Of course, there's, there's pain, there's sin in the world. Um, and of course our own sins and trials, uh, which God trials us through. Um, so, the next question I want to ask, um, what does Peter say the reason or the benefit is of our suffering? And I'm just kind of divulging more into the point here. What, what is the reason, as Peter says in verse 7, for our sufferings? That it may result in praise and glory and honor to the Lord Jesus yes. Christ, right. always pointing to Jesus. Yes, yes. Also to testify faith is Jesus. Yes. So, you know, if you have a spirit of faith and if things are going great, yeah. you can serve the Lord. But when you're in this trial, you know, it proves that the faith is Jesus. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You agree with that? and how hard is our, our hearts and our in, in a simple nature mm. that the Lord has to give us sufferings for us to improve mm-hmm. but left to ourselves without those trials mm. we would actually fade away we would perish so it says something about that main sin and something about our son and heart that this is a way of improving our faith mm. yes I mean yes. great uh, you're all on the track yes Bearing that, yes. Correct. So, um, the, so the, the answer, as you all mentioned, is that, you know, and as in verse 7 says, is to prove our faith, and we'll get to the point where it glorifies the Lord in honor and praise, um, in, in, in especially in the last day. And we'll get there now. So, Paul says in I'll just read it to you quickly in 2 Corinthians 13, uh, verse 5. And he says, Examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not realize that Christ Jesus is in you? Unless, of course, you fail the test. And that's quite an eye-opening verse, if you think about it. And and, uh, the commentator that I I studied brought this to light. we, yes, the Lord is testing us, but we are testing also ourselves. Um, you know, the, the text that Paul says, work out your, your salvation with fear and trembling. Um, and again, J- James says in chapter 1, verse 12, Blessed is the one who perseveres under trials, because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life uh, that the Lord has promised to those who love him. And so, um, there's a very important component in God's law for our daily living. Um, and those who say that the law of God's not necessary or, or it's, it's, it's passed away, of course we know that's not true. Um, we are not condemned by the law because we are justified in Christ. But we still possess the law and it's necessary. Uh, for many reasons Um, and one of them most importantly is to test our faith Uh, are we obedient to God's law in our daily living 
Um, and that's very important uh, for, our, for our salvation, uh, to test our faith. And uh, James, as you said now, the one who perseveres under trial. And so the, the, the goldsmith who's finding the fire again comes to light. Um, we are more precious to the Lord than gold that's been refined, of course. But the goldsmith tests the gold, he refines it, makes it pure um, for, the, for, for that last moment, the day that, of which we will stand before the Lord in the final consummation. And uh, we can re also remember the heroes of faith, or the hall of faith in Hebrews chapter 11. Um, we, I want to just bring to life, of course there's, there's so many, but Abraham, we can just think of Abraham, how the Lord tested him greatly, uh, asked him to pack up everything and go to a promised land, uh, an inheritance that he could never see, an earthly inheritance that he never saw. Um, but he went and with a faith of a, a heavenly inheritance. Um, and when he asked uh, Abraham, who is one of son, Isaac, uh, to sacrifice him, uh, who is the promised son uh, for that inheritance, and how he went forward and did that, um, and the Lord stopped him and provided that lamb for the sacrifice. And so God tests our faith. Um, I want to point out that faith is not just uh, a knowledge or a belief, but faith is something that we do. Uh, it's faith in action. Um, so that is why uh, we, are, we have the, the, the commands of God, so we can do them and act out in them, and uh, being God's revealed will through His Word. And that is also, as one said earlier, is a wonderful thing. Um, now I wanted to quote to you uh, from an extra biblical work, uh, which I thought was beautiful, um, from Second Maccabees. Uh, uh, it's the, the it's the, the text from Sirach or Ben Sirach. Uh, this was written uh, 185 years before Christ. Okay, um, and I'm, this is not God's word. So I'm just making that clear. <laughs> but uh, let me just it's, the title is called Duties Towards God. And he said, says, My child, when you come to serve the Lord, prepare yourself for testing. Set your heart right and be steadfast. And do not be impetus in times of calamity. Cling to Him and do not depart, so that your last days may be prosperous. Accept whatever befalls you, and in times of humiliation be patient. For gold is tested in the fire, and those found acceptable in the furnace of humiliation. Beautiful. Um, and so just to finalize, uh, sorry, read verse 7 again. Uh, These have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. So, then I asked the question, I asked this question the last time. Uh, there's also, when is the Lord, when is Jesus Christ revealed? Correct. Yeah, well, the Lord has already been revealed uh, at His first coming and He's revealed in His scripture, of course, ongoingly, and in the final consummation, there'll be the final revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. There should be also a revealing of, of Christ to others. If we are tested and we are proved um, mm. worthy and our and we do persevere through trials and we do increase our faith, then that that experience and that should actually reveal Christ to others that don't know mm. Him. Yes. Amen. Yeah. yeah. Um, there is, of course, testimony and the Word of God, which is pro proclamated uh, throughout the world. Um, so yes, God's Word uh, is always being revealed, it's, and we, we can we can say that God's Word is eternal. Um, so this revealing of Christ, um, of course, uh, we, Peter's looking forward now again to 
this final consummation of the revealing of the Lord Jesus Christ, um, the day of his return, the great day of the judgment, um, the day on which we look forward and hope. Of course, we have our hope now, as we've said, we, we receive our hope and from the past, what the Lord has done to us in, in our knowledge and through the word, and then as looking forward, uh, and as they call it, the already not yet principle. Um, I'm sure most of you have heard of that. Um, and so, our faith will be tested. We will be tested. And we are currently being tested. Um, and so in doing so, we look forward to uh, obeying the law, the law of God, uh, walking in His will. Um, but all of this, uh, all of this looks forward to one grand final revealing of Christ. And so the reason for all of this, for all of our suffering, for all of our trials, for all of our perseverance, uh, there's a grand reason for this. And just to summarize quickly verse, the two verses, I want to uh, conclude here. Uh, verse 7, firstly. So that it may result in praise, glory, and honor when the Lord returns. So all of our suffering is to glorify God, to honor God, and so we may praise God. But the question is why? Is it because of what we did? No. <laughs> no, Correct. It's not because of what we did. Okay? That's why the Lord gets the, the glory and honor and praise. Mm -hmm. Not us. And so we rejoice in our trials because of the mercy and hope that we have in Christ. These trials are to test our faith, which produces perseverance, which is in our good works. So it produces good works. Okay, that's the fruit of our salvation. The fruit of the, the working out of our salvation, including our ongoing faith, our repentance, our holiness. Very, very important. But we acknowledge that this is all applied to us by the Holy Spirit of God through the blood of Jesus Christ. And so we are justified by our Lord and chosen by our Father. And so in Peter verses 1, chapter 1, verses 1 to 3, it's going back to the redemptive plan of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit who is applying everything to us, in us, in this life, and of course saving us on the last day of which we receive our inheritance. And so all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor goes to Him alone. And that's why it's beautiful um, when Paul wrote to the Philippines, and I'll close with this, in chapter 2, he said, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So let's say praise be to God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ and His wonderful Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for this uh, little text and the wonderful word that we've uh, read uh, from Peter. Lord, we pray that we will continue to grasp your word and we uh, hold on to it uh, for our own salvation. But we know, Lord, that you are saving us and completing our work in us. Uh, so we pray, Lord, that we would have a wonderful joy in our suffering, each and every one of us. We, we all suffer many kinds of trials. And we just pray, Lord, that uh, we would hold strong and fast to your word by your Son, Jesus Christ. O oh, Lord, continue the good work in us and help us to persevere. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.